Hi everyone, it's Jet and Ali Tila. Welcome to our kitchen. <laughs> we're so excited that you're joining us to cook along today. And today we're gonna be making white chicken chili for two and a margarita. This is a classic Ali Tila recipe that we make when it gets very cold in LA. When I say cold, it gets down to like 50. 50? I mean, we are freaking like out. 70. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, we like to serve uh, her white chicken chili in a hollowed out bread bowl. I think it's a really nice presentation. And we're gonna pair this with a classic wedge salad. That's iceberg, and we're gonna put tomatoes, hard boiled eggs, and bacon strips on it. Um, as for the libations, for drinks today, uh, we're gonna serve a mezcal margarita. We'll call it a mezcarita. To be fancy, if you've never had mezcal, it's a tequila smoky uh, cousin, and it's really more of a grown-up version of an old-school margarita. But first, you're going to want to have a few things ready. You want two slices of bacon cooked until crisp. You want two hard-boiled eggs peeled, and then you want enough ice to shake it in your cocktail shaker and then also serve it in your margarita. I'm starving. Let's do Let's this. Let's do it. All right, so to get started, uh, I'm heating up this Dutch oven and it's gonna kind of do double duty. I'm gonna cut some chicken breast to sear, to add back in later so we don't overcook it. Allie's gonna make her secret spice mix, so check that out. So we're gonna make our spice blend for our chili. And I'm just gonna take about a teaspoon of chili powder. To that, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of ground cumin. Teaspoon of kosher salt. about a half teaspoon of pepper. And about a quarter teaspoon of dried oregano. So they can do this ahead of time, right? You can, uh, you, absolutely. You know what I like to do is make big batches of this, mm -hmm. of this spice blend, because you know some recipes, they have so many different ingredients and it's easier to make a big batch and then know, okay, I need about two tablespoons of this spice blend per chili pot and just make a bunch of it, and then you can just dip it in and use it as needed. Another cool thing that Allie does is during the holidays, she makes these big spice blends, and then she labels them, puts a little twine on them, and you can call it like, you know, a Southwestern blend or something like exactly. that. Exactly, so, you can give them as gifts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. super fun stuff. Um, All okay. right, so we have some oil in the pot, and we're gonna throw in our chicken. We're just gonna sear it, because we don't want rubbery chicken in our chili at the end. And in case you missed it, I've cut one chicken breast already, but let me give you a little detail on how I like to cut it. Do you want to stir that, honey? Sure. And I'll do this. Set. There you go. Uh, all right. So what I like to do is take an entire chicken breast and I'll slice it into thirds with the grain first to kind of make three planks. And then I'll cut those against the grain with a little slant on the knife, what we call bias slicing. And that's how you end up with these pretty little planks. Great for saute, great for stir fry. Nice, a little bit of color. And... Yeah, looks beautiful. Okay. All right. Here, we're just gonna throw these into the pan, sear them on all sides until they're less slightly brown. You don't have to cook them all the way through because that'll happen in the chili later on. All right. All right, I'm gonna wash hands and clean up a little bit. All right, Allie, what do you need? You need some knife work done, don't you? I do. Do you mind dicing this bacon and a half an onion and a garlic clove? 10 4. You got it. What do you need first? First, the bacon. Okay. Please. No, no, of course. All right, knife behind you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so to dice up bacon, there's no rocket science here. <laughs> I'm getting a clean gel board uh, just so. You know, bacon is cured, by the way, uh, but just to, you know, for the extra measure of caution, I like to take the bacon, slice it in half, uh, line them up, and it's the old Tila uh, cutting um, uh, rhyme. A tile becomes a slice, a slice becomes a dice. So I cut it into thin uh, slices, and then the slices become a dice. So That's now, my favorite rhyme. Wh why are we, you, you have a good point though, why are we cooking the chicken now and then uh, putting it back in later? Why don't we just go all the way through? Well, we want our chicken to be cooked through, but not rubbery. So oh. we're gonna throw it in the pan, give it a nice sear. We're gonna get some nice caramelization, nice brown color on it. 
Um, but since it's not totally cooked through, it'll finish cooking when it simmers later, and then that way it won't be overcooked and rubbery. All of our date night meals are really fun, but this one is kind of extra to me because there's a lot of kind of teamwork going on. There's it's a lot of extra. handing off. It's extra. So your bacon's there, chef. Thank you. Thank you. Your bacon you. is there, chef, when you're ready. Uh, I'm going to move on to, you said garlic and onion? Right. So I need to have half an onion diced and then a clove of garlic. All right. In case you want that knife skills little tip, uh, I like to take the, the root side down flat and then I'll do uh, the tip, the onion top flat as well. Uh, and then once you have a flat surface, things don't roll around and get you cut. So this is the point where I'll cut the onion in half and then peel it. So our chicken's nicely seared and it's beautifully brown. We're gonna throw in our bacon and just brown that up a little bit too. That looks great. And all that, like that? all the brown like bits, that? you know I do. All the brown bits you're getting. I love the brown bits. And there's no oil in there, right? So the bacon's gonna kind of uh, uh, render and mm -hmm. give you a little bit of flavor? Exactly. Okay, cool. All right, so continuing on onion 101 here, here's the root side. I'm gonna keep the root side to my uh, weak hand side. So I'm cutting in, because I'm right-handed, obviously. I like to keep my fingers nice and high, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna come into the onion uh, parallel to the cutting board, but not go all the way through, quarter inch. And then I'm going to uh, go in to towards the ribs uh, from top down, not going all the way through. I keep this onion together by the root side because it keeps it from kind of splitting apart and sliding around on me. And then my final cut is a slicing cut, also a quarter inch. And, uh, I've in, and in three movements, you've diced an onion perfectly. Um, look, I know it, it might be intimidating at first, but just a little practice and you'll be uh, chopping like a pro. Perfect. Just okay, throw so it right in the pot when you're, you're done. You're ready for this? I'm ready. Beautiful. Okay, here we go. Uh, another phenomenal tool in the kitchen that makes your life easier is a bench scraper. And that's one of these guys. It's usually known as a bench scraper or dough scraper. Uh, but again, it, it gets, it really kind of helps you gather everything you want on the board. And then when you're done, it really helps clean up your board as well. So, all right, Chef, you need garlic, you said? I need garlic. How many? Just one clove. Okay, you got it. Um, uh, if I'm just kind of going clove by clove and I don't need this whole thing, then I'm just gonna kind of uh, uh, use some elbow grease and pull a clove off. If I needed the entire garlic, I would just cut all of it off at once at the root and then smash it and release it from its skin. Okay. Whenever you're ready, throw it right in. You got it. Um, all right, so to peel garlic, I take the root side and I nick off uh, just enough to grab that root. And uh, I'll, I'll usually lean on it. I'll either lean on it with the knife or another tip is to get the bench scraper and just push down and watch what happens. You pull the skin right oh, off. Oh, easy. Yeah, super simple. And why not just keep using the bench scraper? It makes, makes life really easy. Oh, uh, perfect. I also think to myself, you're gonna braise this for a while, so it's gonna yeah. be in a lot of liquid. Yeah. I don't need to get this down like micro fine. So. Perfect, thank oh, you so much. You got it. So we're gonna add our garlic and we're gonna turn our pot down to about medium heat. And then we're gonna cook until our onions are translucent. No problem. Okay, I'm gonna clear down your spice bin. You're done, Allie? I'm, uh-huh. All right, excellent. Spices are done, they're spices all ready. Are done. Perfect. I mean, little things like, Clean as you go, so you have more time to drink mescaritas and eat dinner together. And you know, this kind of tag team cooking, it's fun. I mean, it's like a choreographed dance. That's uh, like a tactic that you would like use on the kids, like clean so you can drink, but for adults. Like he's using that on me right now. Clean as you go, because you can drink your margarita more later. And Allie's saying that because I'm um, outing you. Uh, she spent 15 years in special education as a yeah, preschool teacher. True. So. Uh, uh, she uses those preschool tactics on her number one child. <laughs> we have three. She has three, right? That looks great. You're getting a lot of color, which equals a lot of flavor. Exactly. So our onions are translucent, and it's time to add our spice mix. So I'm gonna add, we're going to add that to our onion mixture. Just stir to mix and combine. A good tip here as well. 
Uh, just like you would sweat or saute garlic and onions, mm -hmm. you want to do that to spices. It, it's called blooming. It really opens up all the essential oils and spices because who knows how long some of your spices have been <laughs> in your cupboard. Guilty. That's right. Guilty. This technique wakes up the flavor of your spices. So you're really just going to stir this until it's fragrant and then you're going to add in your flour. Very nice. What's flour going to do to this recipe, Al? Well, this is going to be our thickener. Oh, okay. Perfect. And in the world of thickening, flour, Thank roux, you. cornstarch, but this one's a flour. So you just want to cook it for 30 seconds to a minute, and then we're going to add in our chicken broth. There it is. Yes, we're humans. We use boxed chicken broth sometimes, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just super tell, delicious. Just don't tell them about, about the boxed wine. Exactly. Okay. You say when you're ready. <laughs> boxed wine. You're totally outing <laughs> us. Are you kidding? All right. Yeah. Good to go? Good to go. All right. And there's a whisk in that yeah. lower right there Which I'm if you need to. Switch to it. in just one second. So, so t talking chef for a moment, um, the flour basically, the flour gelatinizes. Each each molecule of flour basically absorbs and expands, um, and all together that will make a nice thick. So, exactly. So. so we're going to want to whisk our flour with our chicken broth until there are no lumps left. I don't want any lumpy chili. Uh, no. Lumps are no bueno. <laughs> all right. It's already starting to thicken up a bit. Uh, all right, Allie. So that's so looking thick already. Yeah, so it's starting to thicken up. We're going to turn our heat to high and add a few more ingredients. Okay. We've got drained white beans. Some fire roasted green chilies. Uh, in season, if you can find New Mexico green chilies that have been roasted and so diced, good. that is the way to go. But you know what, if you're out of season, these canned green chilies work phenomenally. And then just a little pinch of sugar, we're gonna balance out the flavor that way. All right, I'll get rid of these for you. That's looking awesome. It's gonna be delicious. Uh, do yourselves a favor to uh, make like triple this recipe yeah. and then either freeze it or hold it in a zippy bag or even a vacuum packer if you have it. So, so it's a lot of work. Yeah, that's what we do. No, yeah, we, we always have uh, a good portion of it um, ready to go at any time. The flavors meld together and I would argue just as good. Yeah, it gets better over time actually. All right, so our chili is bubbling nicely. We're gonna add back our chicken and just let it simmer for another 10 to 15 minutes. That's beautiful. Thank you. Uh, what if I wanted to use chicken thigh? Thank you. you could absolutely do that. It'd be delicious. Um, any any chicken, any chicken. Cut. Actually, another protein too. Uh, if you wanted to use pork, pork and green chili is classic combination. Oh, love that. There's no changing in the recipe. Maybe just pork loin or even pork shoulder, and it's a one for one swap and a green chili pork stew. Phenomenal. Um, okay, uh, you've got your chicken chili simmering away. I'm gonna show you how to make an old school wedge salad with like a restaurant style blue cheese dressing. This is one of my favorite salads. Oh, big time. I'm gonna admit. And I'm not gonna lie, like I'm not a huge blue cheese fan, but in dressing like this, it is super delicious. So starting with like a sweet blue cheese, uh, and I'm just gonna put that in a bowl. Uh, there are levels of uh, blue cheese in the world, right? And I'm going with like a Danish blue or, or a sweet blue, and I'm just gonna smash that together with a little bit of buttermilk. So the base of this dressing, I really like one of those chunky steakhouse blue cheese dressings, and we're gonna start by smashing together some blue cheese and a bit of buttermilk. I think people are intimidated uh, by making dressing at home. It's really simple, uh, especially the kind of these creamy dressings like ranch and blue cheese. So the blue cheese and the buttermilk are working together. You can already imagine what that's gonna taste like. Now I'm gonna season it. Uh, so to the blue cheese base, I've got uh, a bit of sour cream. Just think about the flavors that are going in here. Tangy, uh, a good amount of savoriness in there. Yum. I've got some mayonnaise. And homemade dressings are always better than the bottled stuff. Thousand percent, especially if the sum of the parts are good, like really great mayonnaise, really great uh, buttermilk, really great sour cream. So it quality just ingredients. To, uh, right, quality in and quality out, right? And, and, and again, you'll never buy uh, dressing again. Okay, so to season, may I have a pinch uh, salt and pepper there? Of course. 
Okay, awesome. Okay, um, now I need a little more tanginess here and I'm gonna use a little bit of white wine vinegar. All right, a little bit of vinegar for tang, a tiny bit of garlic powder. Yeah, Allie, okay. if you don't mind, you wanna start making our wedges? Sure. And I'm gonna finish this off with a little bit of sugar. And it's time to give it a taste. Now we're giving you kind of basic guidelines. Feel free to taste and adjust. As long as you know what's going in, you know how to play with it and make it your own. Mm. Yes, I am very happy with that. <laughs> All right, so should we teamwork the, the rest of the, the veg prep there? Teamwork makes the dream yeah, work. That's right. I'm gonna say that every time you say that. <laughs> Oh, I love, I married, <laughs> I married my best friend, cheese balls. I love it. You uh, love it. I do love it. Um, all right. So you got the wedges. Do you want to cut those uh, cherry tomatoes as well? Sure. And while you're at it, we can cut the garnish now for the scallions. So. Okay. Great tomatoes. And then we're good. Okay. Yeah. This is coming together pretty quickly. Don't have quickly. to jet these tomatoes. No, you don't have to jet these tomatoes. Not at all. And then why don't you pass me those scallions and I'll get those working for you. Okay, here you go. All right, so uh, to finish out the salad prep, uh, I'm gonna get ahead on basically kind of crumbling blue cheese. I don't want it like, you know, I want it kind of rustic looking, so I'm not gonna smash it together. My bacon's ready to go. I'm also gonna cut the, uh, I'm also gonna cut our uh, boiled eggs. What do you have there, knife? Can I borrow that mm -hmm. knife? Absolutely, That's, sharp. Thank you very much, that's the right knife. Uh, and what I'm going to do is simply just take these eggs and then quarter them. And look at that. Oh, nice yum. creamy yolk. I love that. Now you have a really cool trick for eggs over salads. Uh, yeah, so the way I cook eggs, uh, and, and it really kind of was born from necessity as a young cook, was uh, I, I, when I was younger, I used to do these by like the five dozen. So what I would do is I would put all the eggs in a pot cold water start, bring that water to a boil, and once it hit a full roll and not a simmer, uh, then I would just turn it off. I would turn it off and walk away, and as soon as I was done with another chore in the kitchen, I'd come back and when the eggs were cool enough to the touch and I could pluck them out, they were perfectly boiled. So you can apply that to home life of just starting your eggs cold, bring it to a boil, turn it off, and when you're back after a few minutes and they're cool to the touch, that's the perfect boiled egg in my opinion. Yeah, you, man, you're outing me. Look at that. That's <laughs> my job. So I'm just gonna slice these thin and we'll have a little garnish ready to go. Perfect. All right, I think we're set. So we're ready to kind of build the salad. Your your chicken chili's in a good place. Maybe we'll put it aside and build our uh, mango mascarita. Yeah. Your salad prep looks gorgeous, by the way. Thank you. You're, you had a great knife skills teacher. Jet Tila, in That's fact, right. was That's my right. knife skills teacher. Oh, all those years ago yeah. when we were young. Um, yeah, our, our first unofficial date night was the night uh, you stumbled into my cooking class. And uh, it was not stumbled. a date night. You make me sound drunk. No, no. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you know, there was margaritas involved. Anyway, <laughs> uh, here, I'll give you a little bowl. There you go. All right. And then let's set up. Allie, do you want to grab the little mini prep? And sure. we'll put it up here and we'll start making our mango puree. We're making a fun twist on the margarita. Firstly, it's gonna be mezcal, so it's a mascarita. Second, we're gonna do a mango mascarita. And I think it's important to make your own mango puree, right? I think um, it's the right thing to do. So I'm gonna peel these two mangoes. Allie, do you wanna put- It's a moral imperative. Uh, okay, um, Allie, do you wanna put two thirds cup of water sure. in there? A really nice tip is, you know, these little mini food processors. They don't take up a lot of space, they're not heavy, and they do everything. So this is a ripe mango. Um, can I get nerdy just for two seconds? Get nerdy. There are thousands of varieties of mangoes in the world. In America, commercially, there's like six. Um, and uh, this is actually a Kent mango, I believe. But all you're looking for in the world of mangoes, uh, these mangoes that actually sweeten, you're looking for a nice kind of red to a red-orange color. 
And that's going to tell you that the sugars are, are well developed, by the way. So I didn't mean to like put everyone to sleep, but <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's good to know. Um, you can also use champagne mangoes, which are called Adolfos. But um, you basically go to the store and ask them for the sweetest mango. And mangoes will continue to ripen uh, at room temperature uh, on, on your counter. So if you grab a mango and it's a little firm, <laughs> just give it just give it time. Do you want to peel and I'll, and I'll switch over sure. and I'll start cutting? What's uh, your favorite mango? My favorite mango is actually what's called a, a Adolfo. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also known as a champagne mango. It's super sweet, um, just enough acid to balance that sweet, and it has almost zero fiber. So uh, what I like to do is just kind of score uh, the mango until I hit the, the seed or the bone, as they call it. And then I'm going to um, counter cut perpendicularly. And then that's how I'm going to get these chunks into this uh, food processor. So we're going to go two mangoes. Uh, with a bit, uh, two thirds cup of water. And you can hit that with acid if you want as well, a little lime juice if you wish. But we have also lime juice coming in the form of, uh, we also have lime juice happening inside the actual margarita. So uh, if you're like, dude, this is so much work, I don't want to make my own puree, uh, this is an opportunity to grab a can of very, very high end um, frozen mango juice. Yeah, exactly. Or frozen, or frozen mangoes. So. In our opinion, though, there's really no substitute for, for, for getting mangoes that are at the peak of ripeness. Beautiful. That one looks really nice. That's great. I can work with that. Okay. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, all right. Yum. Okay, yeah, do you want to start grabbing um, all the rest of the uh, materials back there? Of course. There? So the mango puree is something you totally could do ahead. Uh, there's no reason you have to be doing this right now. If you did this ahead, it would just hold out in the fridge until you're ready to use it. I'm going to cut the limes. Yeah. Okay. Here, I'm just about done with this knife, if you want it. Okay. So uh, some pinwheels and some uh, halves for, mm -hmm. for juicing. I'm just going to simply give this a buzz until it becomes a beautiful, even puree. Woo! All right. So you can absolutely use a blender here. Um, but I thought, you know, for the amount we're using, this little mini prep is perfect. And we've cut our limes. We have a couple of wheels for garnish, and then we have wedges for rimming the glass. So you want to cut about half of your lime into the wheels, and then the rest you can just cut in the wedges. Yeah, do you want to, you want to, you want to rim the glasses? Sure, to get those ready? Show perfect. our friends how to do that. The evolution of the margarita glasses right there. Um, and... I don't know, like we're making the grown-up version of yeah. a margarita, so I, we're kind of bringing it into this century. So I'm sorry, <laughs> Mom and Dad. I don't mean to make fun of your stemware, but uh, uh, we're going to go a little more uh, new school. All right, so we're just going to take our lime wedge. We're going to rim the glass just a little bit with our lime. And then we have a chili lime spice mixture we're going to dip the rim into. If you've never seen this, this chili lime powder uh, can be found in a lot of uh, Latin markets, and it goes with fruit, it goes with uh, just about anything, but commonly eaten with fruit, uh, and it has hot and it has sour, and it's perfect. It's a perfect marriage for this mescarita. The perfect marriage. It is a perfect marriage, like this is, uh, because it's commonly eaten with fruit, we thought it would be fun to kind of uh, rim it with fruit. A strainer, I need our... And I think it's in the fridge. Beautiful. All right, I'm going to fill this with ice. All right, time to build our mezcal margarita. So we're going to use two ounces of mezcal. Perfect. Uh, if you don't have mezcal, you should totally do this with uh, tequila. It's no reason not to. Right. Um, and if you've never had mezcal, it really is like a clean uh, tequila with a, with a good amount of smoke. Um, who wants the nerdy tip on the difference? Anyone? Yeah, go big. Remember, there's two of us. You need to make it up for two, so. That is two. So <laughs> totally two. All right, one ounce of our orange, orange liqueur. liqueur. Yum. All right. 
A little lime juice. Awesome. Mm -hmm. We're going to add some mango puree. That looks so good. Mm, that's perfect. And also, guys, if you don't want to make mango puree, uh, find a really good uh, a mango. What are those things called? Mango juice? There's, Mang there's, there's very high-end mango juices in cans that you can just substitute with. All right, show us All your, right. your shaking technique. Do you have a shaking technique? I don't really have a technique. I'm going to stand Someone back. Someone once told shaking. me that you shake it until your hand can't stay on the shaker anymore because it's so cold. But this is, this is an insulated shaker, so I'm just going to have to guess. I don't know, like 10 seconds? Yeah, I'll take over if you want to finish. Oh, no, we're going to do this all the way. So, yeah, I th yeah, right? And then you get, like, go crazy with it. There you go. There you go. Someone grab me a still of that. We're going to need that. <laughs> oh, man. The okay. So we need a little ice in our glasses. You want to do the you. honors? Yeah, I'll bring to you. Don't okay. worry about it. Oh, these are going to be so good. That look right. Oh, yeah, Allie. Looks Super good. Nice. Look at that. I'm still shaking. <laughs> yeah, that chili lime spice is really a fun little pop as you're drinking it. You get a little heat with the smoke. I'm going to garnish you there. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, yeah. look there at it that. is. Okay, so take us home, Chef. Look what do we that. need to do here? Okay, so last, we're gonna stir in the sour cream into our chicken chili. So we're gonna add our sour cream, stir it in. So good. Look at that. All right, sour cream is nicely mixed in. We're gonna season it with some salt and pepper. And of course, taste it first. So I'm gonna to go to the oven. I had those bread bowls at warm. Oh, those look great. Oh yeah. Um, <clears throat> these, these are very simply uh, store-bought bread bowls, but to refresh them, we pop them into like a 200 degree oven for a little bit, just to kind of bring them back. So they're nice and crusty on the outside and warm on the inside. How is it, Chef? Maybe just a <clears throat> pinch more salt. Okay, you got it. Does that look about right? Let's see. Say when? Hit me. Okay, okay. A big little pinch? A little more, a little more, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, also, in terms of heat, now, if they don't like spice, could they could they actually go mild chilies or no chilies at all? What, for what's sure, your call? For sure, I would do, I would still put the chilies in, but I'd use a little more mild chili. That's, okay. That's what I would do. Then you still get the complexity of the chilies, but you don't have the fire. Beautiful. That looks delicious. Okay. Am I clear to build? Wait. No, I'm not. <laughs> Taste your food before you serve it. Good. Perfect. We are ready to build. Okay. Sounds good. If you, yeah, perfect. You got a ladle. I got your ladle. You are, you are on it. I'm telling you, it's date night cooking, man. Uh, we got each other's backs. Now, in terms of how much you hollow Beautiful. out your bowls, it's totally up to you. Uh, we went kind of... You know, right in the middle, maybe uh, uh, an eight to 10 ounce serving. And then uh, we've got some scallions there to garnish. So I'm gonna go here. Ali, if you wanna garnish those, I'll finish ladling. That is a lot of fun. Anytime you're doing stews or soups, you know, it's just, it, it's that little extra, you know what I mean? And when we cook with the kids, they love that bread bowl. It's, I am all about the bread bowl. Right? Uh, yeah. A giant hunk of French salted butter once you eat the actual chili and you are in heaven. Plus it's like chef cred. That's it just true. It fancy. It's like instant um, chef cool, right? Uh, all right, so to build the salads, let's get these out of the way. All right, so to build the wedges, it's not rocket science at all. Um, I'm going to take one to two wedges here, uh, depending on you know how big you went on the cut. Oh, fancy. Yeah. And you know what? You, you can actually look at our date night recipes. It, so we, another class we did was a surf and turf where we did a beautiful filet mignon. Uh, you could actually pair this salad uh, with that filet, and I think that would make a great dinner. That's All right. Great. So I'm going to lay down, uh, you know, one or two pieces 
of the wedge. And I, I'm always thinking about uh, the lettuce as an opportunity to display all the other delicious stuff. So what do eggs. we have? I've got uh, perfectly uh, boiled eggs. And we've got here, I'm going to give you three. Do you want to plate some up? Yeah. Here, here I'll give those to Thank you. Thank you. We've got tomatoes. And, you know, I'm just kind of like laying enough to where I think if I take a bite, I should be able to get a bite of everything. And uh, remember, season every layer. So even though we've made a salad, it's absolutely important to season the salad before the dressing. You always season your lettuce. You do. It's super important to do so. I mean, that is the difference between a restaurant salad or home salad. I think that that little touch really um, um, it makes it super delicious. It makes a huge difference. Yeah, I'm crumbling the blue cheese on top. And do you want to break up some bacon? Do you sure. want to take those bacon bits and just kind of crumble them up how you like? There's no rules, guys. It's really about just cooking together and having fun. I like that. No rules. Yeah, exactly. It'll be anarchy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Gonna do that, I'll clean up around you and then I'll dress. Nice. <clears throat> and then finally, homemade steakhouse salad dressing. So how long will this dressing last? If you don't use all of it, yeah, how long a... will it stay good in the fridge? Well, uh, yeah, so if you put it in something airtight, uh, this dressing is probably good. I would probably go for about a week or two, um, and I wouldn't go any much longer. If you think about the ingredients that are in here, I would just look at the expiration date of the buttermilk, and that'll be my kind of guide as to how far I would let this hang out. But look at how thick and creamy that is. That is awesome. <clears throat> Yum. Yo, we did it. it looks uh, amazing. Ali's uh, famous chicken chili, uh, old school wedge salad, mango. Mascarita. Oh, yes. All right, so we taste. Let's taste. Cheers. No, cheers to you. Cheers Lovely. to this delicious meal. Mm, cheers to you. Cheers to you. Mmm. That's nice. Mmm. Fruity, smoky. Yeah. And I love the chili lime spice mixture on the edge, on the rib. It does taste like the grown up version of a margarita. Super excited for you guys to try that. I think it's, I think it's delicious. Very on trend, Ali. Yeah, very, very fancy. Uh, all right, how do we do this? I'm gonna go uh, into the, I'm actually gonna go right into the stew. I'm gonna try the salad. All right, perfect. Mm. Chicken chili is perfect. Chicken chili is the perfect descriptor because there's that warming spice, it's creamy, but it's got that nice body, like a, like a traditional chili to it. And then with a little bread bowl, that is awesome. Wow. Really great when it gets down to like 50, 60 degrees here in Los Angeles. Everyone else in the country. When like, it's so freezing. Yeah, right. When we're, <laughs> when we're crying at 50 degrees. I love the salad. It's fresh. You have the nice creamy hard boiled eggs. It's great umami from the bacon and a nice bite from the blue cheese. I really like that a lot. Mm -hmm. This is that old school salad that you crave um, and you get every time you go to a steakhouse. What a great combination, really fun for a date night at home with your loved one. So thanks for taking our class. We hope you had so much fun cooking along with us because we had so much fun cooking with you.